Hey Jake with BNH. I am at the BNH Superstore here in the studio here in Midtown Manhattan with Gunter from Ari because we have an exciting new first look at Ari's brand new camera, the Alexa 35. And I was briefed yesterday on this camera. It has some amazing features built into it. Um, let's start with where does this fit in the Ari family of cameras, Gunter? So there's three popular sensor formats. Uh, Alexa 65, LF, where the Alexa Mini LF and the LF falls mm -hmm. into the Alexa 35, which will cover Super 35 formats. We have built a camera that fits every one of these three formats to get the best possible image. And I want to clarify that this is a 4K sensor, correct? Yes, this is a native 4K sensor. Uh, it's actually 4.6K open gate. It has a dynamic range of 17 stops. That means we have added uh, two and a half stops of dynamic range to the existing sensor, uh, about one and a half stops on the highlights, about one stops in the shadows. And also it is a high ISO camera. Mm. That means it will go uh, to 6400 ISO, um, 160 to 6400, and there will be also noise reduction ES enhanced sensitivity modes um, in case that somebody wants to shoot in the dark. Right, this is the, this the first RE camera to have an enhanced sensitivity mode, correct? Yes, um, it's essentially a noise um, reduction processing that we're applying. If you shoot in these modes, these, these, that process is actually baked in hmm. versus um, using the default um, exposure index uh, where it's the, yeah, there's no noise reduction. I mean, we, there is noise reduction done, but not to the extent where it is on the ES modes. Right, okay, so enhanced sensitivity mode is designed to help lower noise when shooting in low light situations. However, it is baked in to the RE RAW, right? There's, there's no changing it post-processing? Yes, that's okay. correct, it's baked in. Uh, it's also baked in in the ProRes. Uh, there is a limitation to these sensor modes uh, in the sense of how fast you can shoot and also how uh, what kind of shutter angle you can choose. Uh, that's just because we require that, that processing time mm -hmm. um, and that takes away from these maximum frame rates. Right, so it can shoot 4K at 120 frames per second in a particular sensor mode, correct? Yes, Okay. 120 frames a second. Uh, in There's 19 sensor modes and um, depending which sensor mode you have, um, you will be able to shoot up to 120 frames a second. And let's talk about that, 19 different formats that you can record in. Now, can you explain the motivation behind why so many options? It's actually not so many. Uh, if you look at the Alexa Mini, there, I think there were almost as many. Is that right? Okay. And um, if you look at what deliverables are requested by different uh, shooters, different, different productions, they all have different stories of what they need. Uh, again, the differences is between Airy RAW formats and ProRes formats. Then again, spherical or anamorphic formats, and then also the specific aspect ratio, whether it's a uh, two to one aspect ratio, which have been become more popular in the later years, but also the traditional 178, 185 to one. Um, and of course, all the anamorphics, all the Super 35 uh, anamorphics, there are also different, um, different sensor options there. So by the time you add them up, there's always more people requesting more options. I remember yesterday uh, going through the tech briefing and uh, one of your representatives at Ari said that you guys had talked to so many different streaming platforms and every one of them requested something different, right? That they needed this, they needed this. So you guys decided to just make sure that all the options were available in this camera. So the most popular options are there. If you really would put all the options in there, you wouldn't, uh, you would probably need 40, 40 different sensor options, but that, that will always slow down R&D work. So we're trying to really simplify things and uh, we'll see, hopefully these 19 sensor formats will be enough. Only time will tell. All right, Gunter, I want to circle back to dynamic range because there's really kind of four categories that I noticed with this camera announcement. It was more dynamic range, more contrast, more sensitivity, uh, better color uh, representation. So more dynamic range, you talked about 17 stops of dynamic range, two and a half stops, that's two and a half stops more than the previous generations of the camera. So you get um, one and a half stops in your highlights, gives a smoother highlight roll off, right? And so 17 stops, is that, was that really important to the DPs and the colors that you spoke to? Is that something they really valued and they wanted to see more of? Well, it's always a challenge when you're in, in the real world and you have to 
you don't have a way to bracket lighting. And uh, with 17 stops, it's almost impossible to clip this camera. And it will be so much easier, faster working. Um, when you know that that reflection, it's, it really doesn't matter because you can always uh, bring it back in, mm -hmm. in post. And I think um, at this point, the Alexa, the classic Alexa sensor has been really the, the best sensor over the last 12 years. And based on our specs, um, it was as, as good as dynamic range we could get. Now we push this camera further um, and two and a half stops of additional dynamic range really makes this quite unique. Absolutely. I mean, with 17 stops, it's like you can almost walk into any lighting situation and be confident that you're going to get your shot. No problem. Uh, the next thing was more contrast. So with the 17 stops, you, had, you ran into some problems in terms of contrast in your blacks particularly, and you fixed that by using a mount that uh, controls stray light, is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. There, is, uh, there was stray light control already in the, on the Mini LF with the LPL mount and the PL adapter. And on this camera, because it has more dynamic range, mm -hmm. we noticed that the blacks were not as black as they can be. Right. And only after investigating what's happening that we realized there is quite some light bouncing around. And so we developed two new mounts, dedicated PL mounts that will have either Elbus or Hero support, which have that uh, stray light control that prevents stray light from really bouncing in the cavity there. So you have much, much cleaner blacks. So the next topic I want to talk about is uh, more accurate colors. So you have a brand new color science in the Alexa 35. What's it called? Reveal. More color, better color. It's a new DeBayer algorithm that's in there. Okay. There is also a new um, airy color space. We're converting basically all the, the, the colors that the camera can capture mm -hmm. into a new defined color space that okay. is larger than REC 2020. Larger uh, than REC 2020, right? Yes. But not as big as ACES because... Not as big as ACES yeah. because uh, ACES color space covers also lots of uh, colors that are not visible right. to the mm -hmm. human eye. Mm -hmm and they cause negative values that cause issues okay. of okay. clipping. Okay. This reveal color process can work in camera. This is the only camera that it currently mm. works in, but it can also, if you're recording raw, this can also be taken into post where mm. it can be applied to older raw footage from, from previous generation cameras. And that makes post-processing much faster, much easier on the back end. Exactly. Right. So, and you also use, so for, as a result of this new color science, this new color space, you're going to get basically better skin tones, uh, sharper, cleaner edges. So I'm, I imagine this will be used on a lot of VFX work, so cleaner for green screen and blue screen, right? That's correct. And also the, the cameras will be matching closely, much more closely to each other. Each camera will have a, its own calibration mm -hmm. unit, so you wouldn't see the tiny difference that we saw in the past. So with more dynamic range, two stops to be exact, you needed a new log that could actually capture that dynamic range. What's it called? It's Log C4. Log C4, okay. Um, that also means we had to fit more code values in this. Um, so your 18% gray is now darker. Right. Uh, so if you right. look at a Log C3 image versus a Log C4 image, it will look darker in Log C4. But there's, right. there's nothing to worry about. Usually you take a lookup table, and in the conversion, you can end up exactly with the same image as you would do from a log C3. Right, so it'll look a little darker than log C3, but you apply a lookup table and it'll correct it and look perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And now there are um, new lookup tables that uh, are coming out for specifically log C4, is that right? Yes, that's correct. There is, uh, we provide a set of lookup tables for different displays and for different uh, color spaces. Mm -hmm. And we highly recommend uh, for post and uh, DPs to use these lookup tables because it's very different to grade this. Uh, it's not the same way like log C3 used to be where people would just simply move a few dials and it would get into that correct space. With log C4, you will have really a lot of difficulty um, to, to get the colors right if you do not use one of these lookup tables. So I would say use these lookup tables first 
when you get into this correct color space and the colors are correct, and then you can apply your grading. Awesome, fantastic. And um, another exciting thing, along the lines of, you know, creative control, you have a brand new way to create to control creativity out of the Alexa 35, and it's called textures. That's correct. Okay, textures. what can you tell me about textures? So textures um, have always been in our cameras, but okay. there was only always one default texture. Okay. Okay, so this one default texture um, was kind of the best overall texture for all the different shooting scenarios. Now we wanted to open this a little bit to the possibility of, let's say you're shooting a lot of skin tones, there will be a different texture for skin. If you're shooting a lot of night scenes, there will be a different texture that you can, can select. Or if you wanted to simulate a lot of grain, for example, mm -hmm. like maybe like film grain like, sure. there is also a, a texture that you can use for that. These okay. textures are very subtle and they um, are applied and burned in right, yes. the, into the raw footage or into the ProRes footage. If it's too complicated or if somebody is afraid to use these textures, I would say there's always a default texture. Don't need to touch it and you're basically, it's the same texture you, you're used to from, from the classic Alexa cameras. Sure, the way I kind of heard it explained was that, you know, you should kind of treat it like an overall look for a show or a movie, right? So we should do a lot of planning, a lot of testing. A lot of is, testing. Because it is going to be baked in. So you make sure yes. that this is the texture that you want, right? Yes. Yes, make sure you test it. Also an HDR display, a big display, you will oftentimes not see these differences. They're very subtle and a small onboard monitor. Yeah. You may dial it in and you may not see it until you have it projected on a big screen. So awesome. always testing. Fantastic. Now, a lot of great features. We talked about the dynamic range, the sensitivity, uh, the contrast control, as well as the color science and the new textures for more creative control. Is it backwards compatible? Can you use this and intercut it very easily with Alexa Mini LF footage? Uh, yes and no. Okay. So because it has more dynamic range mm -hmm. and it has more color, um, it will be difficult to take an LF3 sensor camera and this camera side by side. Mm -hmm. However, if you have recorded in every RAW mm -hmm. with, with an Alexa LF or regular Alexa, you are able to take that through the same reveal color pipeline. And even though you have not the same dynamic range, not the same colors, you, you can get very close in, in matching. But it is possible. It is possible. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Uh, I guess my last question would be, it, when's it shipping? People are gonna wanna know when they can get this. So we're building cameras right now. Uh, the hardware is pretty much ready. What's missing right now is the software. And we're hoping that in July, we will start to see first shipments. Fantastic. Okay, July, mark your calendars. If you want to get one here from b &H, make sure you contact the studio here at b &H. I'm Jake with b &H. Thank you so much for watching. Just keep rolling.